Today, we'll be discussing cash secured puts and how to sell them within the Thinkorswim web app. We're going to start by learning what they are, how they work, and also how to manage them throughout the life of the trade. Now, just as a quick reminder, I will be using the web-based version of Thinkorswim. So if your platform looks a little bit different than this one, you are probably on the desktop site. In order to access this one, you'll just need to head to the website trade.thinkorswim.com and then go ahead and log in with the exact same user ID and password that you normally use. Now that we're in there, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we are going to be learning about selling cash secured puts, which is one of the simplest selling strategies out there. It's created by selling an out of the money put while also ensuring you have enough cash set aside in the account in the event it does get assigned. Now, although it is a put option, it is a directionally bullish trade, meaning we want the stock to go up when we sell one. However, the profits are going to mainly come from time decay or from volatility decreasing, not from the movement of the underlying stock. So again, we're generally going to use this as a way to generate income, but others sometimes use it as a way to enter a brand new stock position, almost treating them like limit orders to buy the stock, but ones that they get paid to put on. That will all make a lot more sense after we go through a few different examples. So for right now, let's go ahead and pull up an option chain. In order to do that, we'll come up here to the search box at the top of the page and then go ahead and throw in the symbol of the stock that we want to trade. In this case, I'm throwing in Google or G-O-O-G. From there, we're then going to be able to find the option chain right down here below. And by clicking on the arrow on the left hand side, we'll then be able to see all of the options expirations available for Google. Beginning on the far left hand side, we can see the expiration dates themselves beginning here at the February 3rd of 2023 expiration, but then going all the way out to June 20th of 2025. Just the right of those expiration dates, we can also see the number of days until expiration. Then coming over here to the far right hand side, we can also see the implied volatility as well. If we were to come back up to the option chain itself and actually click on one of those expiration dates, like in this case, I'm opening up the February 17th expiration by simply clicking on it. Once that's opened up, if we were to look in the center of the screen, we can now see a few of the available strikes for that expiration. Beginning here at the $97 strike and going all the way out to the 102. If you ever wanted to expand that list out even further to see even further out of the money options, we could either hit the more button on either side, or we could come up here to the upper right hand corner to the strikes menu where it currently says strike six. And by clicking on that, we can then adjust the number right down here below. And in this case, if I were to click on 12, coming back down to the option chain, if I were to scroll down just a little bit, we can now see 12 of the available strikes right here. So now we can see it begins at the 94s and goes out to the 105s. If you were to take a look to the left of that strikes column, you're going to find all of the available call options. Looking to the right, you'll find all the available put options. You can also see if we were to come to the very top of the option chain itself. So right here, we can actually see some column headers, which is simply telling us what information is being displayed down below. Right here, you can see I've currently got probability out of the money. I've got delta. And then I've got the current bid and ask of those options, which is essentially just the current price of them right now. But now that you've got a basic idea of what it is you're looking at here, when it comes time to place the trades themselves, it's actually pretty simple. Whenever you want to buy an option, you're going to click on the asking price. Whenever you want to sell an option, you're going to click on the bid price. Since we're going to be going over how to sell cash secured puts in this video, the process is pretty easy. We're going to start by coming down below and looking at a list of our available strikes. And then we're going to find the one that we want to sell. There are a few different ways that people like to pick this, whether it be based off of probabilities or some form of technical analysis. Maybe you see a level of support in the stock and you decide to sell the put there. Or you could just pick the strike at a price that you feel comfortable owning the stock. So right there, if you were to sell that strike, you're saying, hey, I'm okay buying 100 shares of Google in this case at whatever price. Now, there are actually a lot of different ways that people like to pick this, whether it be based off of the probabilities of the option or some form of technical analysis. Like maybe you see a level of support in the stock and you decide to pick that option to sell. Or some others even make it simpler than that, just selling the strike where they're comfortable owning the stock at. So picking the strike where they're comfortable buying 100 shares at Google. Now, in my case, I have always picked my options based off of the probabilities, which we're going to get to a little bit later. 
But for right now, I'm going to be looking at selling a 30 delta put, which has a roughly 70% chance of expiring out of the money. So in that case, if I were to come over here and look at the current delta of some of these options right here, so take a look in this delta column, if I were looking to sell a roughly 30 delta put, it looks like that would be the 95 strike put. Right here, you can see it's currently trading for $1.99 by $2. And remember, if you ever want to sell an option, which is what we're going to be doing today, we need to click on the bid price. So over here on the left, I'm going to click on the bid price of $1.98. You can then see that as soon as I clicked on that, it actually built out an order ticket down here below to sell that option. Right here, it says we are selling one of the February 17th $95 puts, and we're going to be doing that for a total credit of $1.98. Now, just remember what it is that we're saying with this trade. We're essentially saying that we're willing to purchase 100 shares at Google at $95 a share anytime between now and the expiration date of February 17th. Now, rarely, if ever, will you get a sign on an option before the expiration date, but it can happen at any point between now and then if the option does fall in the money. For those of you watching this who are brand new to selling options, I like to think of this type of strategy as being an insurance salesman. If we assume the buyer of this put has 100 shares of stock themselves, then they're buying this put as a hedge or insurance in the event that the stock does move down. Since we're acting as the insurance salesman, we're stepping in and telling them that at any point between now and that expiration date, they're protected at $95 a share. All they have to do for that protection is pay us an insurance premium, which in this case is that credit of $1.98 or $198. So if we were to actually do this trade, if we actually sold this put option and held it all the way to expiration and assuming it doesn't get assigned early, only two things can happen. Either the stock is below our strike price, so Google is below $95 a share on the 17th of February, in which case we will be forced to buy 100 shares at Google at $95 a share at that strike price we sold, but we still get to keep the premium that they paid us, that $198. On the other hand, if Google is above our strike price of 95, that means we do not have to buy the stock and we get to keep the premium. So generally, most people who do this type of strategy are doing it to generate income. They don't actually want the stock. They want that consistent income every week or every month. But they do go into it knowing that the stock could get a sign, that they might be forced to purchase the underlying stock. So if we think about that for a second, that means that in this example, the absolute most amount of money that we could ever make on this trade is going to be the cash that we receive up front, that premium of $1.98 or $198. However, on the flip side, the max that we could lose on this trade is going to be far more substantial. Assuming we actually get assigned the stock at $95 a share and we're forced to buy 100 shares of it, that's going to mean a total investment of $9,500. So now if we do get assigned and the stock then goes to zero, we're going to lose that full investment of $9,500 minus the premium that we were paid. So in this example, if we were to get a sign, we're getting assigned at 95, we're collecting $1.98, that means the most we could lose on this trade is going to be $9,302. Now that max loss isn't really realistic in most situations since I don't know what would have to happen for Google to go bankrupt and the stock to become worthless, but it is theoretically possible. Which is why for this trade to be considered cash secured, we're going to need to have at least $9,300 of cash set aside in our account in the event it does get assigned. But let's just say for now I'm actually happy with that. I understand all the risks and I want to go ahead and place this trade. In order to do that, we'll just come down here below to the review button, go ahead and click on that, and then hit send one more time to actually place it. Once placed, in order for us to check on that order, we could either scroll down here to the trade section. So looking right here, you can see that Google position right here, or at least all the trades I have on Google or all the positions I have on Google. Or we could also see it by coming up here to the positions page, then coming over here to the right hand side to the position section itself, finding the position of Google, clicking on the little arrow on the left hand side. And now looking down below, we can see our brand new short put against Google. We can see I sold one of them because it says I've got negative one positions. It also says I've got negative one over here on the right as well. We can see how much I'm up or down today since selling it, how much I'm up or down overall, as well as the trade price over here on the right.
So right here, you can actually see I got a little bit more than I was asking for it. I sold it for $1.99. When the time eventually comes to close out of this put, we're going to need to place a trade to buy it back. Since remember, we sold it to open the trade, so to close it, we have to buy it back, and ideally for less than what we sold it for. In order to do that, we'll come back over here to the symbol itself, go ahead and click on the position here. You can then see it takes me right back to the Google Trades page, where if I look down here below, we can again see the exact same thing we saw before. So right here is that Google position, but more importantly, if we were to look on the left-hand side, you can see that trade is currently checkmarked. Once checked, that means if I were to come over here to the far right-hand side, and if I were to hit on close selected, it's going to automatically build me out an order to close all of those positions I had checkmarked. So in this case, since I only had a short put checked because that's the only position I had, right here it's building out an order to buy back that put option. We would then fill that out just like normal, and right over here I could either leave it as the current price if I wanted to buy it back right now, or I could also set a profit target if I wanted to automatically close it out if it ever reaches a specific price. So for me, let's say I did want to do that, and I wanted to set a profit target at roughly 50%, which in this case, since I sold it at about $1.98, that would be buying it back if it ever went down to roughly 99 cents. Now, since that is very unlikely to happen today, I'm going to come over here to the right, and I am going to flip this over from a day order to a GTC order or good until canceled. Now that I've got everything filled out, I can now come down here below and hit review, and then go ahead and hit send to actually place it. But now that you know how to place the trade itself, let's go ahead and cover some of the best practices. So that's going to be how to pick the expiration, how to pick the right strike price, and then when should you close out of the trade. Beginning first with the expiration date, I typically like to stick to expiration somewhere between 30 to 60 days out. That's going to be mainly because time decay starts to ramp up around that time, so going out any further than that doesn't do me much good. Theta is going to continue to grow as we get closer and closer to expiration. But if we wait and get too close to expiration, I'm also going to start to see a lot more volatility in my contracts, meaning the price of the option can start to swing dramatically even with a small move in the underlying stock price. So to take advantage of that time decay, I'm going to try and sell as close to expiration as I can, but I'm also going to try and stay far enough away to avoid crazy swings in the option as well. Some option sellers will even choose to just outright close all of their short options when they reach 21 days out from expiration, letting them get no closer than that to avoid that volatility as much as possible. But it's not an exact science, you'll figure out what you like. But for me personally, that 30 to 60 day window is ideal for the majority of my short puts, with maybe a few weeklies from time to time to try and increase my theta, or just trade in earnings for the fun of it. But then after picking the expiration, you'll need to find the right strikes to sell as well. For me, I'm nearly always using probabilities to pick the strike, mainly sticking to options with a delta of roughly 30 or a 70% probability of expiring out of the money. Now, if you decide to sell closer to the current price, you're going to get more premium for doing that, but you're also going to be far more likely to be assigned. If you instead choose to sell further out of the money options, the further out you sell, the less you're going to get paid, but you're also far less likely to be assigned the stock. If we were to come up here to the option chain for a second, and we'll stick to the Google option chain, if I were to come back down here below, and let's just go ahead and open up one of these expiration dates here. Coming back down below to the option chain, if we were to scroll down just a little bit, and then come over here and take a look at the delta and probability out of the money columns, you can see right here, I don't actually have the delta or probabilities that I'm looking for. So I'm going to come over here and expand this just a little bit by hitting that more button. And now coming back over here to the right, you can see the 94 strike puts have a delta of 31, but a probability of expiring out of the money of roughly 64%. So it's not exact. I might decide to either sell the 94s or maybe the 93s in this example, just depending on what I choose. But that's how I'm going to pick my short options to sell based on either the delta or the probability out of the money. But that's just my preferred strategy. Other traders like to incorporate some type of technical analysis as well, or find levels of support in the stock, or just find a stock that has bullish momentum and then try and increase their overall probability of profit if they can. Some are even far more simpler than that, just identifying the price at which they would wanna buy the stock and then simply selling a put at that strike since they're comfortable buying the stock at that level. 
So you do have a few different ways to go about this, but most sellers are going to tend to lean on probabilities for the most part. Now, after the trades have been placed, you'll now need to have your closing strategy nailed down. You'll want to have a predefined profit target in your head before you even enter the trade. For me, I'm basically going to close out all of my short options when I hit a 50% profit. I might even close earlier than that if my move happens quickly, but that's typically my exit point. I also tend to hold longer than I probably should, meaning for me, if it's still out of the money, but I haven't hit my profit target, I'm willing to hold much closer to expirations than others would probably recommend. Like I mentioned earlier, some will even choose to exit their short options 21 days till expiration regardless of the profit or loss, they're just going to exit everything to avoid that volatility. That's probably the smarter option, but I'd practice this a bit in a paper account and then see for yourself how things move over time and then choose what you prefer. You'll also want to know what your risk level is so you know when to exit or roll when things go wrong. Some traders are going to choose to close out their puts when they lose a certain amount of money, so basically a predefined stop target, while others are just going to choose to leave it be and simply hold and then risk assignment. Now besides that, others might also choose to simply roll the option even further out in time and ideally down to a lower strike. And I'm not going to be touching too much about rolling in this video, so check out this one if you are interested in learning more about the best practices of rolling and why it would make sense. But if we were to take all of those best practices into account, let's go ahead and do another example using, let's say Tesla. So coming up to the search box, we'll go ahead and throw in Tesla or TSLA here. Coming down below to the option chain, I'm going to find an option expiration between 30 to 60 days out. In this case, that would be the March 17th expiration, which is 45 days from now. Looking down below at the list of available strikes, I'm then going to find the put option with a delta of roughly 30. So in this case, that would be the 156.67. And because that's a really weird strike price, because Tesla had a recent split, I'm actually going to go a little bit further out of the money and pick a more normal strike. So in this case, I'm going to pick the 155 strike put. And then over here on the right, I can see it's going for 820 by 830. In order to sell it, I'll come back over here to the bid price. Go ahead and click on 820 here. I can then see the order ticket down here below to sell one of the March 17th. 155 puts for a total credit of $8.20. Now, besides just selling it, I also want to put a conditional order out there to say if this order fills or when it fills, I want to automatically put out an order to buy it back at my predefined profit target. This is going to be an example of an advanced order, and because I'm going to go through it quickly, if you want to learn more, check out this video above. But for now, in order to create that, I'm going to come over here and click on Contingent Order. That will then add a brand new order below our first one. So right up here, we can see the opening trade to sell this put. And then you'll see a little toggle down here below, which is then saying, once this order fills, once I sell it, I then want this order to go out there to buy it back. And since I always set my profit target at roughly 50%, I'm going to come down here and set it to buy it back at $4.10. I'm also going to come over here to the right and flip this over from a day order to a GTC order. And now in order to place it, I'm going to come down here below and hit review and then send. Once I've placed it in order to check on it, I'll just come back over here to the positions page. Then if I were to come over here to the right into the activity section, we can see all of my open orders right now. And right here, it looks like all I have is an open order to buy back that Tesla put which means if I were to come down below to the position section, find Tesla and open it up, it looks like that short put has already filled. So I've already sold it, and now I've automatically got my order out there to buy it back if I ever hit my 50% profit target. But that'll cover just about everything you need to know to get started within here. Hopefully you now feel at least a little bit more comfortable with the TOSS website and how to sell cash secured puts within here. There's a lot I only covered briefly, so if you are looking to learn more, consider checking out this video next. You might find it helpful as well. Otherwise, have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you all in the next one.